Hello, my name is Quentin, and I'd like to uh, welcome you to this very brief introduction to GNU Cash, um, the open source accounting software, completely free accounting software. Now, I am not an accountant, but I have used software that's quite expensive um, to manage accounts of some of my businesses. And in the past, GNU Cash was something that you had to be a bit of a geek and a real open source enthusiast to want to use. Um, it's been around for a long time uh, and always performed its functions, but wasn't exactly beautiful or easy to use. But revisiting it recently, I discovered it um, it has come on really quite a long way, and it now runs on uh, on Linux, on Windows, on the Mac, and um, and I've been really quite enjoying using it. Now there are some of you for whom the whole idea of enjoying using accounting software is 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 a strange phrase, and uh, I should make it clear I am not an accountant either, um, uh, by any means. And uh, accountants are strange people, and they speak a strange language um, where they use words like credit and debit to mean things that don't make sense to us lesser mortals. So. It is quite possible that I will tell you stuff that is wrong, or at least might be better explained by uh, by professionals, but at least I'll try and do it in language you understand. So, GNU Cash. GNU Cash, open source free accounting software available from gnucash.org. You can go here and you can download it. And I won't go through the process of installing it here because it's reasonably straightforward and you can find other guides on how to do that. What I will show you while I'm here, though, is over on the left there's this documentation link, the GNU Cash documentation project, and this is the up regularly updated nightly stuff, but that is very much in flux, so I would suggest you go to the current stable release where you can find the help manual uh, and also the concepts guide. So this, for example, is the web uh, HTML version of the concepts guide. This is a PDF. This is um, an ebook format. And if we look at the web one, now this is not very pretty, but it's actually really quite well written. I was impressed with this. Um, if you go to the basics and have a look at, say, the basics of accounting concepts, if you don't know about this stuff, um, it's actually quite nicely uh, done, and I recommend reading this. Um, I, I found it really quite clear. Um, so for the moment, let's assume that you have GNU Cash installed and you need to open a new file. When you first run it, or um, when you go File, New, GNU Cache will lead you through um, setting up a new file. A file in GNU Cache is basically a set of accounts, a set of records um, of everything that's happening in, for your particular business or personal um, uh, accounts. And uh, you can just have one of these, or you might have one per year, or you might have several of them. Um, if you're interested, each uh, file is actually just uh, stored as a single XML file. Um, no proprietary closed data formats here. You can get this stuff out using other methods if you ever need to. However, let's move on. First thing we're going to need to choose is what currency we want to use as our kind of base currency here. Now, I'm in the UK, so I'm going to use uh, British pounds. Um, GNU Cash can actually handle multiple currencies very easily and do some clever things like get automatic updates from the internet so you've got current exchange rates. Uh, you can have uh, a set of bank accounts with different currencies from around the world, uh, stocks and shares likewise and so on. But for most of us, we're going to stick to one currency and keep it simple. The next thing you have to do is set up your accounts. Now, if you're not used to this, this looks very big and scary. So let me see if I can explain in non-technical language what accounts are. Accounts are really categories of money, right? And um, they are ways that you might categorize the money you've got, uh, the money that's coming in and out, where it came from, where's it going, and so on. Sometimes these accounts in an accounting package will correspond directly to a particular bank account. So we can see here, for example, under our assets, our current assets, we have a checking account and a savings account. Um, you can create more, you can delete these. We'll come back to how you do all of that later. Um, but sometimes they are really just categories. So for example, um, here is the expenses, auto, parking account. That's more really the category of um, money you've spent on parking. Now, the interesting thing about um, double-entry bookkeeping, which is what GNU Cash uses, 
is that you can think of these things in the same way. So you can go and look at the account for your checking account and it will look much like the statement you get from your bank. Probably if things are right, almost exactly like the statement you get from your bank. Um, but you can also look at the account for your parking and then you'll see all the payments that have gone into parking and it will also look like a statement for your bank. So it's really just a way of categorizing stuff. And in accounting, there are some uh, top level categories that generally pretty much everything else falls into. They're in no particular order here, just alphabetical. So let me explain roughly what's meant by these so you don't need to know a lot of this to get started. Assets, roughly speaking, stuff you've got, right? It's money in your bank accounts, for example, can also include stocks and shares and equipment and so on, but it's, it's stuff you've got. Equity, which is often called capital in the UK, um, is roughly speaking where stuff came from originally. If you're a company, this may be where the money in your bank account came from, well, it came from selling shares in the first place. If you're doing your own personal accounts, then the equity probably is um, the opening balances of your accounts, the stuff you happen to have in your bank account when you started keeping this set of accounts. Or if you're starting a new financial year, then the things under equity may be the balances that came from last financial year. And in fact, in simple accounts, often the only thing you have in here is the opening balances of your accounts. Expenses is stuff going out, right? And you can see that's often grouped into things like car expenses, entertainment, uh, dining, education, gifts, and so forth. Under income, well, that's stuff coming in, which maybe salary, maybe gifts, maybe interest from your other accounts and so forth. And liabilities is stuff you owe people, typically credit cards, mortgages, loans, and so forth. And if you think about it, pretty much everything falls under one of those five categories. These are the top level accounts that um, most common situations, uh, th these are all you need. And everything else is falls into one or other of those categories. Now, when you're starting a new GNU cash file here, you can pick a set of accounts. You can always change them later, so don't worry too much if you pick the wrong ones. Um, so I'm going to start here just with a simple checkbook. This assumes the absolute basics, and we'll add some more accounts later so we can uh, make this more sophisticated. Simple checkbook here just gives you a checking account, some opening balances, and some somewhere to mark money coming in and out. If you wanted to do, say, business accounts, you've got a huge amount of, of, of extra stuff for legal fees and um, janitorial expenses and all this sort of stuff. And you can select the ones of these that you're interested in. Let's start with simple checkbook. So here is our file with the new accounts in, and if you want to at this point, you can put in an opening balance if you have one. So here's the checking account, and I'm going to assume that I've got £100 in there when I'm starting my accounts today. And nothing else for the moment, that's fine. Press apply, and last, uh, lastly we have to just give this thing a name. I'm going to go to my desktop, actually, and I'm going to save it as demo1. Normally you probably want to create this in a folder of its own because it will make several accessory files associated with the main account. Oh, it's popped off the screen, there it is. So this is your basic view in GNU Cache. This is what you'll be looking at a lot of the time. Here we can see our accounts, which looks like that list you saw earlier. Under assets, under current assets, we've got the checking account, which has 100 pounds in it. There's nothing else really in here except under equity, there's the opening balances, which is basically where that £100 came from. I'm going to pretty much ignore equity from this point onwards here. If I double click on one of these accounts, I get a little statement here, which looks a bit like a bank statement. And imagine, for example, that I had spent some money. Um, perhaps I had spent it on um, some cookies. Uh, and I have spent £30, which is withdrawn from this bank account. One of the nice things about GNU Cash is that it uses helpful terms like deposit and withdrawal rather than credit and debit that some other packages use. And I need to say where um, that money went. Well, in this case, the money went out of here and went into expenses. I've got no tighter classification than that at the moment. Now, as it happens, these are both on the same day, so it sorts them in a fairly random order. I may actually just, let's imagine my opening balance was set yesterday just to... Um, keep things in a um, in a slightly better order here. So I had £100 initially, I've spent £30, I now have £70. 
Now, what's interesting about double entry bookkeeping is that every transaction, like spending thirty pounds on that's actually quite a lot of cookies, isn't it? Yum, um, spending thirty pounds on cookies um, appears not just in the checkings account here, but appears in somewhere else in the expenses account. So you can look at things um, from either the checking account point of view, like we just did, or the expenses account, where you can see these are my expenses, and um, there was £30 that came in as an expense uh, from the checking account. And you can look, view, view these. Sometimes it's more useful to look at your list of expenses, sometimes more useful to look at the assets. So this is why it's called double entry bookkeeping. Every transaction involves at least two accounts, basically where the money came from, where the money went. Um, where the money came from, the account is typically one that corresponds to your bank account or your credit card or something like that, and where it went is essentially a category um, like uh, expenses. Now, expenses is not very useful, that doesn't really narrow stuff down for you very much, so let's go and make some slightly more detailed expenses accounts. If I come here and looking at expenses, I want to split this up into some uh, some categories, so I'm going to create a new account here. Notice I had expenses highlighted, so by default, the new account I create will be um, a subcategory of expenses. And I'm going to have one called car. You can probably ignore most of the other fields in here, unless you're doing anything strange, like having different currencies, but there's lots of things you can change here. For the moment, let's just ignore those. So under expenses, you see I can now group stuff. I've got car, and let's do another one, um, which is food and um, and now what I can do is if I go in back into say the checking account here this one for cookies which originally went into expenses I'm going to edit this and I can actually do this by there's a little button here which will give me a pull down list and I can say that actually rather than that just going into general expenses I want to be explicit this is food and let's imagine then that uh, later today I go and buy some gas some petrol and that will go into expenses car and because I'm in the UK and petrol is phenomenally expensive at 60 pounds um, and you can see the balance in my account is now only 10 pounds so let's go back here and we can look at the accounts and you can see that I've spent 60 pounds on the car um, I spent 30 pounds on food and uh, so my the overall assets in my checking account now are only 10 pounds and the expenses here the parent account is the sum of all of its children. It is possible for accounts to have things um, not just in the children but in themselves. So if this doesn't seem to add up to that and that, it's because there are things that are expenses which haven't been classified as car and food. Some people don't like that. Some people would want to make sure that you only ever put things in the final sort of bottom level accounts. And so we can edit an account. Let me show you. If I edit expenses here, if I say that this is a placeholder account, that means that it's something that can contain sub-accounts. Hover over it and it'll pop something up. This account is present solely as a placeholder in the hierarchy. Transactions may not be posted to this account, only to sub-accounts of this account. So it's it's like a folder uh, in which you can um, you can put other accounts, but uh, it can't actually contain any um, entries itself. I'm going to leave that there. Other things you can change easily. In the UK, for example, we tend to call checking accounts current accounts. So I can go there, I can click it, uh, edit, I can change the name of the account. That's fine, it doesn't change anything except the name. If I actually wanted to move that current account to be somewhere else, at top level under assets, for example, or um, uh, you know, when I've got a more complex hierarchy, similarly, I can do edit here and I can choose the type of account here and which account is its parent. So this is under current assets, but I could move it to somewhere else. Essentially, you don't do drag and drop. You go, that might be a bit too easy to get stuff muddled up. Um, you go in here and you change what's the parent account of this account. Okay, so there we are. So um, if I look at um, the uh, current account now, I just double click on it and we can see there the various transactions. If we look at the expenses account now, we can see that it's got nothing in it. Um, in fact, it can't have anything in it because we made it just a placeholder account, so it won't get anything in it in future. So I'm just gonna close this tab, which I can do by clicking on the close button here or pressing Command W on a Mac, probably Control W on Windows. Okay, so just to recap then, with double entry bookkeeping, 
If we make an entry in one account, it always has to be balanced by an entry in another account. When I pay for some petrol in my current account, I need to categorize where that's gone, so I'll say it's gone to the car expenses. Now, there's a useful shortcut if you're entering um, a new transaction into GNU Cash. Here it's very easy because we've only got a very small number of accounts, but you may have a much larger number and it can be a pain to use the, that pull-down menu to scroll through them. So, let's imagine that I pay uh, my next-door neighbor's son, Ben, to clean my car for me. And I can see the list of things I could possibly categorize it as here, but a quicker way of entering it is just if I type um, exp colon, see it shows expenses, if I type ca it starts to autocomplete for car and so forth. You may have several layers of hierarchy. This can be much quicker, you just hit enter to say that you're basically done. And Ben, I'm paying five pounds to clean the car. You can see my balance has gone down to five pounds here. It's just a useful way of doing it. So now if we look back at the accounts, you can see that the car, uh, the car account has two entries in it. Both in this case came from the current account, though one of them might have been from cash or something like that. So, the same entry, two different places. And in fact, switching between the two different um, references to a particular transaction in two different accounts is quite common. And so we have a shortcut, this jump button up here, which will jump to the other account that are, and highlight the particular transaction. I can use jump to switch back again. Well, let's... Um, Let's, uh, oh, let's put some income. Let's imagine I get paid. So I'm not just going to put it under income. I'm going to categorize my income. So I'm going to create a new account under here. And this income is of type salary. I might have income from other things like interest on bank accounts, for example. This is uh, some salary. All of the rest is fine. Under there we have salary. So I'm going to assume I've just had a paycheck for 250 pounds, which makes me a very happy bunny. And um, I could do. I could enter that either in the salary account here, or um, by going into the bank account and saying where the money came from. I'll do it in salary here, and so I've got my paycheck, Hurrah. and it's um, income of two hundred and fifty pounds. And where is that going to be transferred to? Uh, this is the accounting way of saying, you know, what's the other half of this transaction? Well. I'm in the salary one. This is actually just coming into my current account. There you go, my checking account. You will find, by the way, on the Mac that sometimes you need to do slightly funny things to with the focus of the thing here. I need to hit enter just to make sure it's um, it, it's it's captured that. Um, sometimes I have found on the Mac that things like an OK or submit button can't take the focus, you have to actually click very deliberately inside the window and then click on the OK button. I'm sure that's just a temporary glitch, but in case you hit it, do click around, it will work. So now if we go back to the accounts, you can see my net assets have gone up to £255 uh, because I've had some income from salary, which has also added correspondingly to my checking account here. So I can look at the checking account, double click, and we can see that my paycheck has come in here, and that's a deposit. So what else can GNU Cash do for you? Well, um, uh, we can produce reports. Let's have a look at our income and expenses here. We can get a variety of different um, statements. Let's have a look at a profit and loss, for example, over a particular accounting period. Um, you can see here I've my revenues, 250 pounds, my expenses, 95 pounds, leaving me with 155 pounds uh, um, total net income. I made a profit, hurrah. It does it for a particular period. Why does it do it for this period? Well, that is my default accounting period that's set up. These slightly peculiar dates are because in the UK, for some reason I do not know why, um, our uh, accounting year runs from the 6th of April to the 5th of April the following year. Um, you can, of course, get a report for any period you like by clicking on the Options button up here, where you can change all sorts of things. Um, but if I just do General here, I can pick the start date and the end date, or just say the start of my current accounting period and end of my current accounting period. Um, all sorts of things you can tweak in there, like which accounts should be included in, in a profit and loss, um, and so forth. I will 
will let you explore those yourself. So how do you set that accounting period? Because it'll be different for different parts of the world. Well, that's under GNU Cache Preferences here. I think it's Edit Preferences if you're on Windows or Linux. And you can set the accounting period here. Um, in my case, I've done it to absolute dates. That's what I'm in. Um, now, this is a little bit of a failing, I think, on GNU Cache's point of view, because this is stored as global preferences. And of course, you may have different accounting periods um, for different accounts. Your business and your personal accounts use different dates for the start and end of accounting. And um, I'm not sure how you choose that. You may just then have to be careful that you, you switch between them um, when you're when you're switching so that is a bit of a limitation but there's all sorts of stuff you can set in here about you know what format you like your time in whether you like the date in the US or UK or ISO format um, all sorts of stuff here another thing you can do with GNU Cache is um, import statements from your bank so if your bank can if your online banking system can produce um, uh, Quicken format or one of these other formats um, you can import the transactions to see if you're entering them all by hand. You can also reconcile the account. Let me just make this a little wider. You can see there's a reconcile button there. Um, and if you haven't seen this before, this is quite fun. You basically say that on a particular date, my, um, my bank statement says I've got this much, and then it'll take you to the next step and um, show you essentially all the things here and you can say yes that's on my bank statement and that's on my bank statement and that's on my bank statement and when you've ticked them all then hopefully you should, this difference here should all come down to zero tick them off on your bank statement as well you can do this electronically with stuff you're importing as well but this is a good way of making sure that what you think you've got in your bank account and has come and gone from your bank account um, is what your bank thinks has done so as well i'm going to cancel this for this moment so I hope that gives you a, just a very simple overview here of the kinds of things you can do um, with GNU Cache. Let me show you a couple of quick shortcuts which, which may make, uh, make stuff work a little more smoothly. When you're entering a new transaction, firstly, if I'm looking, say, at my current account here, I can basically go down here, click, and start typing. Um, if I'm in the middle of a long list somewhere, this blank button is quite useful which says move to the blank transaction at the bottom of the register that will just do the same thing and it will take you uh, down down there another way you can enter transactions is rather than having to change to the window of one of the accounts that's involved is if you do command T which you can also find under here actions transfer this allows you to transfer funds between accounts which is essentially the same thing let me bring that over here so I can specify the amount 15 pounds say I can specify a date um, I can put in some extra information if I need to like maybe uh, more cookies and I can say that I'm transferring funds from my current account to ah, show income and expenses to my food account there you go so that um, is a quick way to let me move anything between any of my accounts um, without having to be in that particular um, window or tab at the, at the time I do it. Command T on a Mac, I imagine it's Control T on Windows and Linux. Okay. There you can see more cookies have gone in there and uh, it just enters it in the same way but you don't have to be there to start. Um, another good useful shortcut if you have a particular type of transaction that occurs regularly is you can just hit duplicate here. Make a copy of the current transaction and say which date does it happen on? Well, it's happening on the 18th. There you go. And it's done exactly the same thing. I can go through and edit that if I like, but that's a very quick way of saying, yes, same as last time. If you know that you're going to pay Ben to clean the car once a month on a regular basis, you can actually schedule that. And I can make a scheduled transaction and say, I want this to happen monthly. And you can see the dates here that it would, it would happen on, on this current schedule. Uh, and you can change various characteristics of that. And what will happen then is when you fire up GNU Cache, any of these scheduled transactions that have um, happened since you last closed it down, it'll say, ah, do you want to include these? These are what I've got in my schedule. And it'll, um, it'll let you uh, say yes or no, or skip or ignore them or whatever. But it also helps to uh, make sure that you don't miss things by accident. Well, I hope that's a, a useful introduction. Oh, 
don't forget to click save. You can see this little asterisk up here. There. That shows that it hasn't been saved yet. Um, you can set GNU Cache to uh, auto save files and it will do so periodically every five or ten minutes. That's a, that's a good idea. I should think that's under preferences. Let me just check. Um, general um, show auto save confirmation. Right. Auto save time info, um, interval five minutes. There you go. So it will now it will save it every five minutes to make sure you don't lose stuff. But um, you can always save by hand, particularly if you know you're about to to quit or something. I hope that's been useful. Hope that gives you an idea that it's not all as scary as it might look. For those who do know more about accounting packages, there's serious amounts of stuff you can do in here to do with creating customers, creating invoices, um, processing payments new vendors, um, linking to online security databases so that you can work out what the current value of your stocks, shares and currencies are. Um, uh, and you can get a general ledger which shows you all of the transactions, um, standard split format here so that you can see everything uh, and so forth. But um, there's, uh, there's plenty of good stuff in the manual about how to handle all of that. And I just wanted to give you the basics here. Thank you for listening. I hope that was useful.